So I had about four years of knowing that beautiful woman, um, the creator of QHHT. And so I, I feel so lucky. But Thank you so much for joining me, Diane Morrison. Now, for people that don't know Diane, she is an extremely rare human being on the planet. She is one of the very, very few that have actually done the full level one, level two, level three certification, personally trained by Dolores Cannon herself. And so, so she must take in a, a very, a very beautiful shine to you and must have been very blessed because I'm, I'm just presuming, but you knew her very, very well and was, ended up being dear friends with her. So, so first of all, just, just tell people whereabouts you are and how to get in contact with you if they want a QHHT session from somebody who's personally trained by Dolores herself. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you for inviting me to share with you and everyone today. And I'm, I'm really honored and blessed to be here to be able to speak about something that we both love, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique and Dolores Cannon and Julia and the family. So uh, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you very much, first and foremost. And um, yeah, I'm in uh, Western Massachusetts. Uh, yes, I'm a level three practitioner and I've been practicing since um, 2011. And so uh, we're looking at 10 years this year. Um, I can be found on uh, the official website, qhhtofficial.com under find a practitioner level three. And I also have a website that's um, relatively um, basic, but it is uh, healingworks-salon.com, healingworks-salon.com. And I also have a Gmail account, which is all one word, healingworkssalon at gmail.com. And there's no spaces and no capitals, just all one. So th that's how I can be found um, for session work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say that um, I don't know if Dolores took a shine to me or not, but I did to her. <laughs> and so w one of the wonderful things was I was just fully immersed in this work. And um, I think because I was so actively involved and, you know, trying so hard to do everything Dolores told me, um, maybe there was some attention received for that because I really... I took to Dolores, like the old saying, a fish took, takes to water. I, I just have never had an experience like that before where I was given a book and read the book and I had to go. I never knew I was gonna become a practitioner. I just knew that I had to get to Dolores as quickly as I could. It was an overwhelming magnetic draw to her. So I think there was something in the cards that played out for us at a soul level, for me anyway, and um, it's been confirmed in my own sessions that, you know, she played a significant role in my life. And um, I knew that because the feelings were so strong. But um, like, I don't know if she took a shine to me, but I certainly loved her and respected her work. And it seemed like that, you know, worked out and in a mutual agreement, because now I'm here to just carry out the work as she taught and now as Julia teaches. And, you know, I, I feel in my heart and soul that I'm here to help preserve her legacy with the family, you know, and, and really be an ambassador or a representative for her work because I value it so much, you know, so I, I give a nod to Dolores in all things and all ways, you know, and thanks for, thanks for letting me, you know, chat about that connection with her. Yeah. Pleasure. And you're certainly an, an ambassador for QHST and Dolores as well. Yeah, I love them both. <laughs> it's, it's a great uh, system, a great technique, and it's helping um, so many people. It helped me a lot in my own life personally, and I just love it. I can't get enough of it, so I love to share it, and I love to see people coming and transforming themselves uh, through this work. I love to facilitate for people that want to learn and grow and know themselves at a very, very deep level. As we know, it's really that heart and soul level that we get into with this work. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that. Yeah. Feel, feel free to tell me yeah. because you, you're one of the most experienced practitioners around the world. Well, I and certainly have been in this for a few years and there, there are others and some are more visible um, in the public forum than I am. And some are, you know, less, but 
everyone that trains with Dolores and gets receives the teaching from Dolores or Julia now is teaching it. Um, everyone has the same ability to do this work, which I love. And just taking level one, everyone has all the information they need to thrive with this work and help other people um, to thrive personally in their own lives and also in, in help others to do that. So I don't know, I have the experience I have. I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed and I'm grateful that I got into this when I did. I'm grateful that I had, oh gosh, let's see, Dolores left the planet in 2014 in October. So I had about four years of knowing that beautiful woman, um, the creator of QHHT. And so I, I feel so lucky, but I know there's a lot of people that feel this way. So I'm not alone. And, um, I just am grateful to be here to talk about it. Um, and maybe, um, maybe we can chat about some of the things that, um, you know, have been interesting, uh, in the work, uh, along the way. Please yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so like I said, I started out in 2011 springtime and, you know what you and I talked yesterday, but I joke about it being April Fool's Day <laughs> because, um, you know, there's such an awakening when we do this work and when we learn the technique and start practicing. It's sort of like, geez, was I the was I the fool before? Maybe because I didn't understand, probably. <laughs> but um, it was perfect timing. And I like to joke. So April Fool's Day was a life changing event for me. Um, I got on my path and I got into the deeper work that I think I'd always been searching for. And so you start out when you go home with family and friends and then more people come, you're excited and, um, and you start seeing the magic that happens in a session. You, the, the, okay, the magic is the connection with the higher self that we call subconscious in this work. So when, um, we facilitate, we're seeing people connect with that part of themselves that knows and that can heal them and can provide information to help them stay healthy and well and as Dolores said we're not supposed to be sick but this wisdom has been over eons lost to the masses but I feel like Dolores is helping return it that we have more ability than we know so some of the things that I love um, to talk about are the the healings that happen in the session work because I was you know an occupational therapist worked in healthcare before I got into this and I love that too but I just felt like working in that system was a little less free, you know, in terms of helping people access something more that could be directly and naturally um, tapped into. So the healing sessions, you know, there's some funny ones that are actually popping into mind, but um, one of the early ones I think was a man that came and, and he had like a hairline fracture in his ankle. I think it was something, something he did. And um, back in the day, you know, this would have been around 2011 or 12, um, you know, his higher self said, oh, yeah, we, we can heal that for him. And I said, oh, wonderful. That's what he would like, you know, and they did the healing and they talked about how, what they were doing. And I said, now, when he goes back to the doctor, is he going to be able to, are they going to be able to see this healing on the x-ray when they take it? And back in, at that time, the higher self said, Actually, they will not be able to see the healing, but he needs to know that it's been done. And I said, well, why is that that they won't be able to see the healing? And the the higher self said, we don't have the technology right now. Like we humans do not have the technology right now to see the healing that happened on the x-ray level. So he was talking then that we didn't have the technology to pick up that the healing had happened. It was too coarse, we could say, that the x-rays were too coarse just back in 2011. And I know there's advances going on in medicine all over the place now. So maybe they can see it now with different scans, but the higher self wanted him to know that he needed to trust that the healing was done. And he Mm -hmm. needed to understand that it was, period. It was done. He didn't necessarily, he wasn't gonna get the validation of mm, technological x-ray validation but he needed to start understanding that he and his higher self were doing the work and it was done and he could trust that. So I've noticed a big shift since then in the, um, there's a little, okay, maybe part of my role too is the collaboration between traditional medicine and QHHT because I've had more cases where, you know, it's evolving over the years where now sometimes the session uh, work is evidence there is evidence when they go back to their traditional medicine people. So anyway, that Mm. case was, was early on the fracture hairline fracture in his leg was healed. He was fine. Um, 
as time went on, I mean, there's so many sessions that are, um, I would say everybody gets healing of some sort. Um, and it all depends on what the person needs to grow and what they need to learn from. But lots of healing in terms of like around the years 2012, when that big shifting of consciousness was going on and many were awakening, you know, and it was all predicted by, you know, things like the end of the Mayan long count calendar and everything. We went through a shift then. Some people mm -hmm. noticed, some people didn't. It doesn't matter. It still happened, you know. But um, more and more around that time, people were healing and clearing old energy, sadness, pain, trauma from the past. And we were being told that um, there were energetic clearings going on. And I used to joke with people and say, lit literally, the higher self wants you in. They want to clear you out and get you on your way so you can get going with what you need to do. It was just like, <laughs> get them in, <laughs> clear them out and go, go work in the world, go do your thing, right? So we totally. had that funny, funny phase there where it was almost like it's sometimes the higher self wouldn't even necessarily need to talk about um, what the creation of the ailment was about. It was just, we're just going to clear them. Yeah, they're all set. They've worked through everything they need to know. They don't really need a past life to show them. They don't need anything. They just need to just have a moment here where we can energetically work with them. We got them here so we could clear them out meaning release any energetic residue, I will call it, of mm. sadness or pain from the past. Because we all know that in the past history of humanity, and it's, you know, it's, it's been rough. We've been brave souls here on earth. <laughs> but the treatment hasn't always been so wonderful though, but that was all to learn from. So higher self was basically saying, we need to lighten their load, just get them in, clear them out and leave. So higher self was being super cooperative, not always sharing a lot of past life information and just helping everybody release energy that was heavy that's all heaviness so they could lighten up and be happy in their lives and do you know whatever they wanted to do basically so that was another trend that happened early on now coming more into recent time um not too long ago not too many years ago i had a woman come to me who was referred uh for a session and now she had cancer um and she had a tumor and it was in her like genital region. So she came because she had actually a traditional medicine team of cancer experts, you know, people that worked with this issue and they had been helping her and she had been going through different treatments, but it wasn't really working as well as she wanted it to. So she came for a session. Woman was amazing, just sweet, open. And you know, sometimes when, when we're in, at the end of our rope, probably with traditional attempts to heal, um, we're more receptive to complementary or alternative healing because mm -hmm. we've exhausted all the known resources and now we're going off into the unknown. We're more open to that. And this is where this woman was. Her heart was open. Her heart and soul wanted help. It was really the perfect position to be in for anybody that's considering getting sessions is just being open to the new and being willing to receive. And she was right in that sweet spot. So she came, she was shown what she was shown. She did have a past life shown that day. Um, I think she had a couple, I don't remember the details completely, but um, when we got to the healing part, um, you know, she was given some information about why that ailment was created. And again, we always stress that there's no blame, there's no judgment about this. It's just, we create everything just to learn. So we need to learn about our creation and the higher self is always willing to help people with that. So she got some information about why that was created. It made sense to her. When we got to ask for the healing, when I asked for the healing from the higher self, they said, absolutely, we will do that. We will clear this for her. And I said, wonderful. You know, and I asked a few more questions just to make sure she had all the information on her recording, um, what she needed to do or how she could hold the healing in the body. Higher self was super cooperative, lovely, supportive, as it always is in its own way. Um, she left the session and she had had somebody, a relative drive her here because she had a distance. Um, the next day she called me and she said um, that it took her twice as long to get home because they had to stop so many times along the way because she had to use the restroom and she was releasing mm. all the way home, releasing. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, so yes. she got home <laughs> lots of, a little bit, double the time later. 
And she finally, when she got home, she was able to have time to herself. And she said, normally she could see the tumor if she looked with a mirror. So she said she finally had a moment, she went home and she checked out where the tumor was and she said it was gone. So higher self said they would heal. The ride home was a big release. She got home and the tumor was gone. She couldn't see it. And I got that phone call. She had left a message because I wasn't home at the time. When I got that message on my answering machine, I literally, I don't care how long you're in this work, how, how many t things you witness, I literally burst into tears and wept. Mm. I, I feel it now, gosh. I was so moved and so happy and thankful because, you know, as practitioners, we know this works. We've either experienced it, we've seen it, we've felt it. Mm. But when you have other people coming that are super receptive and they want to heal themselves and they get the results like that, um, there's nothing better in the world to me anyway. There's nothing better. Um, that was the most, yeah, you know, I think we're all in this. We're all, we're all alike. We're all in this together. So she had that um, beautiful, beautiful experience of healing in one day. So when she went back to her traditional team of doctors and medical care people who are very lovely, um, she went through the exam and they said to her, well, we haven't been able to get those results that you got. And they said, so whatever that woo woo stuff is you're doing, keep doing it because we can't get that result with you and you did it. Mm. So we were really happy about that. Now the, the story doesn't end there because a few months later, um, she contacted me again and she said that there was more growth in the area. And I said, okay. She said, I would like to come back and do another session. I said, all right, fine. I'm going to just be with you now. I'll help you as much as you want. Whatever you want to do, I'm here for you. Because that's kind of how I ride. You know, you really mm -hmm. want this and you're doing the work and you're committed to this. I will, I will go the mile, you know, and I think we all will. So she came back. She had another session. More information was given. She did another chunk of work in terms of her own um, self and learning. Um, again, the higher self said they would heal her. So she just, she did discover more information. Like the first time she got what she needed, we always get what we need. Um, so she got the first chunk, went back, got results, then more information needed to come up. She was ready for it. She got it. She went back home, went back to her team. And, and they literally said again, you know, whatever you're doing, it's working. Whatever that woo, -woo again, they kept saying like, whatever that woo woo stuff is, you keep <laughs> doing it. Cause she had told them that she was coming for a session and they were mm. fully on board, which I think we're finding more and more that traditional medicine is understanding that when they come to their wall of understanding, it's wonderful that there are other solutions out there. And now when teams are very open-minded, medical teams are very open-minded and they work collaboratively with the complementary or alternative healing techniques, I believe that's what's supposed to happen. I believe we're supposed to be working as a whole where whatever helps do it and let's all work together. So that's, that's cool. So they basically said again, whatever that is that you're doing that woo woo stuff, you know, we don't understand, we can't do it, but you know, you keep doing that because she, they had checked her and I guess she had more tumor growth. And after the session, again, the tumors were diminished. So they were going away in one session. Um, so this was very hopeful. Um, that, that really warmed my heart. And just to see her openness, I guess that's a key for anyone listening that's thinking about having a session too, is yeah. be open, um, you know, be willing, be, I guess the word humble always comes to mind. It's like a being a, a humble that there's something so great that we're working with and be willing to receive from that. And, and, uh, no worry, no fear. It's all love. It's all beautiful energy. And it's not, nothing's going to hurt you. It's all, it's really sweet. And it's, it's more than we know. We can access more than we know. And that's a beautiful thing. So I would like to say that was the end of the story and the woman got better, but there was more to the story. And this is, this is something also I like to talk about. The, the way things turn out isn't necessarily always what we think it's going to be, but it is something deeper. It's a soul path that the person is walking it's not, we're not just physical beings, as Dolores said, you know, we have a body, we are not a body, we have a deeper level, a soul level existence that is actually our purpose for being here is to evolve our soul. So 
months later, I got word that the woman had passed away. And so as I reflected on the thing, it was very sad, but because I had facilitated two sessions and I knew her pretty well, I understood why her soul was ready to go. She did her work. She cleared everything up. And the truth was she, her true love had passed away and was on the other mm -hmm. side. And, you know, this was a woman that was a little bit older, but um, she wanted to stay for her family, for her, you know, her earth mm -hmm. family, but her heart and soul wanted to go home and be with yeah. her beloved. So I say this because I think we all have a lot to learn about what it means to die. And it's like, it's, it's not a bad thing when that naturally happens, you know, you know, like people have cleared everything up. They've made peace with their lives. They've done what they came to do, which is something I'd, I don't know what other people come to do. I just honor their path. You know, um, nobody really knows why somebody's here or when they're going to go or what their purpose is, uh, except when you talk to the higher self in a session and you learn. Um, but you know, that, that might not have been her human wish because she did want to live and she wanted to be healed. That was her human wish. But I guess her soul really said, no, it, it's time to go and we can be back home and we can be with our beloved, you know? So her, her soulmate yeah. was on the other side and she went to join that one. So to me, it's a beautiful story, but it brings up a lot of issues, I think, for humans when we talk about death as being, you know, a beautiful transition when it's time, you know, may not be what we want. And it's hard for the people left behind, but she cleared everything up. She had two sessions. There was proof in the physical that she cleared and healed with her higher self's help. So um, that that session was a real, really emotional one as well to facilitate because of getting to know her and really you know, helping her with her path and being honored and blessed to be a part of her journey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. so nice. Um, so that was a beautiful one. Um, beautiful. Did, can, can I ask, did, did she, did she pass away quite contently and in, in your opinion? Yes. Oh yes. The word I got was yes. I mean, I wasn't there, but um, mm -hmm. I was told that, yeah, it was a very, you know, peaceful, probably very harmonious, I will say as a word, transition. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking yeah. if I can remember correctly, family and friends were all with her and yeah, yeah, it was absolutely part of the gentle she, slide back home, you know, yeah, to share it. She found her inner peace. Completely and totally. I'm going to tell you, she arrived with it she had already made some kind of deep connection with herself when she came here I, her energy was just so peaceful like she had done a lot of work before she showed up and then she just did the clearing of the rest of it yeah. so it was a real honor to be in her presence because she was so at peace with herself you mm -hmm. know yeah that's that's what i find people are searching for something and i it's my belief that people were actually searching just for their own inner peace. I see that. Yeah, because when you're in peace with all of yourself and all that is. It doesn't matter what happens. Right. You can, you can handle anything. Correct. And, and be okay with it and accept it. Mm. That's, that's what I found the great Dolores Cannon had. She had yes. so much inner peace within herself. Mm -hmm. She was so connected, so solid in her knowingness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she had been instructed by the higher self for over 40 years. So she was the best student the higher self had ever had, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, and she diligently, persistently kept going, even though it was hard. I will tell you, she did open up a little bit that year before I saw her the summer before she passed. And I noticed that she was opening up more with us as a group um, that was there for training and listening to her. I just noticed she gave more, a little more personal story, which she hadn't really done much before. There was a shift that happened almost like she was, you know, she was aware that something was happening mm. to her like or was going to who knows who knows what she knew but I just noticed she was more open more peaceful more at peace with the truth of her life and it wasn't easy she talked about that quite a bit I think before she passed I heard a lot about um, 
just how hard it was to be finding this information out with her husband be, before he um, transitioned. The two of them were so brave, so courageous to be presenting this information to the world. And she wanted to publish her first book and nobody would touch it because it was too mm. progressive. It was just, it was a different time on the planet and nobody wanted to touch that. And yet mm. because of that, the discouragement, the roughness of it all, I guess it was her husband that encouraged her to do, um, to create her own publishing company because nobody would touch her work. So he yeah. encouraged her and she, she did create Ozark Mountain Publishing um, so that she could publish and present the information she was learning. So boy, what a, what a strong woman, brave, courageous, kept going despite, you know, we could say come hell and high water, like she didn't have an easy ride, no way. And yet because of her, we all get to learn this, we accelerate our, our learning and our expanded states of consciousness because of this woman who was just so persistent, but she knew what she had a hold of. She knew it was mm. important and she knew she needed to share it with the world. So we're super, super fortunate that she did. Yeah. Boy, yeah. We're all very blessed. Yeah. But I will say that, you know, like that diamond carbon under pressure creates a diamond. That's Dolores, you know, too, because yeah. all that pressure um, that she and difficulty that she went through, it just made her shine, made her mm. come to peace with it all. You know, so you're right. She was at peace because she knew she could, she could handle anything really after all she'd been through. This is, it's right. a journey. yeah, it's a mm -hmm. journey, a journey. It's an athletic journey in strength of mind and body and soul, <laughs> you know. It is. Yeah, she figured out the key um, pieces that helped mm -hmm. her to find the wisdom, you know. Yeah, and she used to talk about this and Dolores, um, Julia did too, like, um, I think it was game board earth that Julia talked about game board earth. It's like, it is a game. We come in, it's hard. It's a hard place to be earth. Um, Dolores talked about it being the hardest place in the universe to be. It's a really dense planet, but we learn more because of it. And she also said that there isn't a single soul on the planet that isn't like a master soul at this time, because it's a time of great transition. So in case anybody's feeling a little shaky or weak in their existence, just remember you wouldn't be here if you weren't a master soul. You're stronger than you think. Um, and there's there's a lot of interesting stories in Dolores' book that'll help people if they want to read mm. them. So, so yes, it's a game. Although sometimes it feels very real when we forget that we are spirit and matter and we start to think we are only the physical. That gets really tough. Yeah. And the emotions mm. that go with the physical are, are rough when there's a lot of disturbance or upheaval in the, in, on the planet in general. But we are, yeah. we are, we are more than that. And that's also Dolores's and Julia's message is we are so much more than just the physical. So that can help when we connect with our spirit, you know, our spiritual self, um, mm. our energy self, however you want to word it. But yeah, it's, um, it's a game. Remember that. And that's why our higher selves, I think, are always telling us to stay light, lighten up. <laughs> Don't be so heavy. Like if you mm. can be, find your joy, find your passion, find what you love and do it, you will stay lighter. Like it isn't meant to be drudgery here. It isn't meant to be all hard. It's meant to also be fun. And whatever that takes for each person, find your own joy, find your own um, love, find your own passion, whatever it is and do it if not full-time, mm. part-time, because mm. that energy of happiness and joy is what keeps us healthy. Yeah. It's a frequency of health is happiness and joy. Mm. And it's okay to be happy even in times of stress. It's actually probably more important to find a little mm. something to do. Yeah. Just find a little piece of happiness. Mm. Yeah. And hopefully do it often. <laughs> Repeat it daily. <laughs> moment by moment eventually yeah, yeah totally and and you and i are in a very um very blessed boat where we we're, we're doing what we were born to do i feel that we're, mm, we're, we're very very lucky and it very much ignites the um, our own soul within and it's it's a beautiful feeling when when, when you achieve that and we both owe that to to dolores for showing 
but showing us the path. Yeah, super grateful that she came into this earth plane when she did and super grateful for everyone involved with my getting there, including the people on the phone at the office saying, oh, she's teaching a class. Just you can take the class, then you can get to her. Yeah, those those mm. people that were in the office at that time. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So so th yeah, there's more stories, too. I just wanted to share if we have time. I don't yes. know. How yeah, good. Okay. I've so, got all day. <laughs> this could be a long one. <laughs> um, yeah, so so there's another interesting story. And it's interesting because this woman actually contacted me recently. She wants to do a little more work. And I'm super happy about that um, because she had such an interesting session. So I want to chat a little about it without giving any personal details away. Um, mm -hmm because we always protect the privacy of our clients, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's really a beautiful thing to be able to chat without, without data about personal stuff, but just the general sense of it was um, this woman had, um, I'm just going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. You know, she had arthritis all over her body. Um, and so she was, it was, she was in discomfort, you know? And so part of the reason she came was also, she was referred, but it was also because she wanted to heal and she wanted to learn about this condition that she had. So we go through the session and actually it was really fascinating to me. There was a past life shown in this session. Um, and this is, this is fun to talk about because this is how the higher self works. It showed her a life um, where she was a little girl. Um, turns out it was like the, on an ocean cruise with her family. Um, and she fell overboard into the ocean and she did drown in that life that was shown. And then a lot of detail was given and physical sensations as she was viewing that life uh, in the session. She, um, as the little girl, was experiencing that she had a lot of pressure on her as she went down into the water because water pressure, we know, um, as you go into the water and go deeper, it's, it's a very big force on the body. Mm. So the higher self wanted her to, to see that and also feel that a little bit. She was fine. You know, we have the different ways of, of helping people to be able to view without experiencing sensations. So she was mm. fine. She needed to see everything just the way she saw it, but she experienced the whole body feeling pressure on it and discomfort. So you, you can see where this connection is going to help her understand where that originated that arthritis, we don't, in the physical world, we think it's just an ailment, like you can't do anything about it and it just happened, maybe it's genetic. But when you come to QHHT, you're ready to learn more. So sometimes ailments can be rooted or originate in a different lifetime and we carry it forward because we didn't either understand it or it was maybe it was so intense that it overshadowed more lives and maybe we, did, we need help letting it go so we don't have to have it anymore well they showed her that they let her have the experience because that was the origin of the rheumatoid arthritis was that pressure on the body the discomfort and as a little child she didn't understand what was happening to her mm -hmm. so there was a memory again our heart and soul remembers everything that's ever happened to us from the time we left source to now so she had a record in her heart and soul that remembered pressure remembered discomfort but because she was a child in that life, she didn't really understand it. It wasn't integrated. She passed on. And there were actually the, the interesting and sweet part was while the little girl was experiencing and viewing herself as, you know, going under the water, there were lights that were coming towards her, which were her guides and her angels coming to get her. Yeah. Beautiful. So it was really sweet. So, yeah, when we got to the higher self part and we asked for the healing, the higher self was saying, yes, they were going to do the healing, but they wanted her to understand where it came from because Dolores is saying we create everything just to learn. So she learned in the session, in the first part, that it came from that life. Then when you know, when you have essentially learned where it came from or what, why it was created, you literally don't have to have the thing anymore. It can just shift your consciousness. It can shift your energetic body. It can shift your health simply by you've learned it now. You don't need it anymore. Mm. So her higher self showed her what the origin of that problem was for her. Doesn't mean that rheumatoid or arthritis is this for everyone. 
It doesn't mean that's the root cause for everyone. I like to make that clear. It just means it was the root cause for her. So we can, in the physical world of medicine, we can generalize about why people have what they have. But until you get into the deep states that we work in, you don't know the exact specifics until you get in that personal space with your own higher self who has the um, records of everything that's ever happened to you and will tell you what's important, what's appropriate. So she got there in the higher self because it showed her, said, yes, they do the healing. Now, I haven't really talked to her. I talked to her a little bit afterwards and she was feeling much better. Um, so I can't wait to talk to her again because I want to see how she's doing and what happened after, you know, again, we say one session is all that is suggested in this work. Um, but when you are also blessed to be able to hear back from your clients, um, it's, it's really fun to kind of keep this, the, the work going if needed or dive in deeper and learn more things, whatever they want. You just, we're here for them. So I guess I'll have to check in with you some other time and let you know what I find out when I do meet up with her because um, I'm curious to know how she's feeling and what her how her life changed after the session too in more detail but I, I did have a couple talks with her and she was doing better and you know in the conventional thinking with rheumatoid arthritis that is something that is thought of as not really having a cure so mm. when we can hear from the higher self that they will heal her and they are definitely willing to clear that from her body you know, this is groundbreaking, groundbreaking information for mass consciousness, really. You know, mm -hmm. some people have always known, small groups of people have always known that there's more possible, but we're at a time in the history of humanity that now this information can be shared and people are ready to hear it more and more people are ready to hear it. So yeah. I, am, I am so excited about the changes that are going to go on with health, wellness, and um, medicine, I guess we could call it, as is this information can be added to the mix to help yes. we're here to, we're here to help you know so it's, yeah. it's 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 finding the balance and i'm i'm very blessed because especially down here in australia i i have a lot of doctors and psychologists i've got one psychiatrist that um he he sends some of his patients to come and have a session with me yeah very exactly so they're, they're starting to open up to it they don't understand it but they just say go and see go and ring this guy yes and it's beautiful and i'm i'm in the same situation where i get some medical people coming and it's nice to have collaboration and um i'm completely open to working and helping and actually there's that person there's one gentleman that's on my mind i need to call him uh, he works in the boston area and there's some collaboration that's going to brew and come out of this. I know we've talked about it and I think we've just needed time to let the higher energies of self um, formulate a plan. But I I've been getting, you know, when people are on your mind, you just have to call them and say, mm -hmm. there's something we need to do. And um, just to be able to work together um, from all fields to help people, it doesn't really matter who, is responsible for it actually the person is really responsible for it in the in themselves it's, so but we're it's all the here. result that counts yeah and and we're all here to assist you know whoever wants to do this work is here to assist we know that we're not the ones doing the healing but we can facilitate the person's healing with their own higher self and that's the joy yes. of this and then we can work with other groups of of helper beings too to get the best results for our patients our clients we don't call them patients in this work they're the clients you know so so this is exciting we're on the cusp of something really amazing with collaboration and blending and helping in the fields of healthcare and wellness it's it's an exciting time to be here i'm it's so glad exciting. you're yeah i'm glad you're having that experience too with um people trusting you to contribute to the health and well-being of their their clients as well yeah yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very blessed and grateful. Yeah, it's an honor too. Yeah, so that's that's some some more interesting, fun things. Um, I will say, yeah, healing healing happens in many ways, um, but whatever way is best, and that's what I love about this work, as I know you do as well. Um, the higher self does what's appropriate. It'll never give the person more than they can handle, and it'll mm. never give them less than they need. It's always just right. And the way the person that's coming for a session can benefit is just to be open, suspend any doubt, 
you can doubt later if you want to, but I don't know that you'll want to after you've had your experience, you know? So I've also been told little key things here by the higher self in sessions that um, belief or trust helps us open the door to our connection with our higher self and doubt closes the door. It's our hand on the door always, but um, trust helps us open that door that connects us with our higher self, like a portal, you could say. We open the door because we trust. We, we trust and we say, okay, I know you're there. We open the door and we let in the wisdom and the healing energy. When we doubt, we say, nope, I don't believe you're there. Nope, I don't believe this is true. Higher self is not going to interfere with our lives. You get to choose what you believe or don't believe. But when we doubt, we shut the door on more. So I like to share that. It's always us. We're in charge of opening or closing our connection with our higher self. But maybe more and more people are going to hear these stories and they're going to say, I think I'll choose to open. I think I'll choose to trust. What have I got to lose? Nothing. I've only got to gain, you know. So maybe mm -hmm. these messages will go out and more people will take advantage of this opportunity to experience their higher self working with them. Yeah. Totally. And that's what I always say to people. What, what, what do you have to lose? Yeah, nothing. Mm. Maybe you'll lose some heaviness, some, some sadness. <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, keep it, but I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's right. So I want to talk about a little funny story too. When I was traveling to do some sessions, I will say that um, I had this, this one young man and he didn't believe in any of this really. And so um, I'd seen a, a lot of the family, extended family members before him. And it was so funny because he was such a delightful young man. I just got a kick out of him. And he actually was giving me some advice to help me with some of the things in my life with my son. <laughs> he was like a really lovely soul. I'm like, hey, thanks for telling me. He's like, no, you got to understand about young men and your children. And <laughs> really super wise, super lovely person. But he didn't really believe in any of this. He was like, I'm, I'm more into science. You know, I just need you to know that. I'm like, great, awesome. This is going to be wonderful. Well, in his session, he was shown a lovely past life, super sweet, lovely, quaint. And um, he got his information from his higher self. And when we got to the part, we asked for checking the body scan, checking the body, seeing how he's doing with his health. Everything got checked out. And they said, oh, um, we're going we're gonna to heal his knee. I said, oh, well, he didn't mention that he had trouble with his knee. Oh, yes, he injured his knee a while back, and he just forgot to ask you. I'm like, oh, okay, so what's going on with the knee? And we got some information, and they said, so we're going to heal that now. I said, great, I had no idea. He just didn't even mention. Well, we're going to take care of it. I said, wonderful. Funniest thing, when he gets up from his session, he looks at me, and he's like, what was that? <laughs> like, What? what just happened i looked at him i said that was amazing that was so great i go and you didn't even tell me about your knee he goes i forgot i didn't even think of it i go well it's healed so you know you're all set it was so sweet so i mean these i think to to highlight the higher self it does what's best it'll take care of us if we just let it and this young man didn't believe in this stuff but he was willing to to experience it yeah just give so, it a go yeah, give it a go. Who cares if you believe or not, if you're willing to give it a go, right? That's mm -hmm. what can happen if you do. You get, you get gifted with healing that you didn't even ask for. It's amazing, right? It's yeah. amazing, yeah. It uh, is, it's so, so amazing. So mm -hmm. hopefully this is something that, um, you know, will give us some food, give people in general a food for thought about what, what, did, what do you really have to lose? Trust or doubt? One opens you up to more and to the gifts and doubt shuts the door. Which do you want in your life? Which do you want? It just seems that it's something to ponder if anybody has any confusion about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Beautifully, beautifully put. Yeah. So, so thanks. I mean, I feel like the wisdom of the higher self is always with us, especially the more you do this work, the more connected you get with your higher self and you become one. You know, this is sort of what happens. It's a state of inner state of unity consciousness. So, yeah, the higher self always sends us little messages and, and we just flow with it more as a, a collaborative now, as opposed to separate aspects of self. It's, it's really a joint venture now. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So I don't know, have you had a lot of sessions where you um, have, have been able to communicate with sort of 
we'll call them space brothers and sisters because I had a client that was in her 80s that gave me that term, like space brothers and sisters. I thought that's fantastic because we do have galactic family. Um, mm. Some people, some people may not feel too comfortable with that yet, but I believe as time goes on, we'll all be more comfortable with understanding, hey, we're here, we're on earth, we're beings. Um, there's other yeah. habitable places. Maybe scientists haven't quite um, identified them yet, but we'll get there. Um, yeah. But there's been I'd, people yeah, forever dealing with other off planet beings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like referring them to as star family. Ah, uh, yeah, I like that a lot too. Star family. Yeah. Mm. Because our origins are actually in the stars. You know, we are, we are the same substance made of the, the stars are made of, but I like that the star family that feels right. Yeah. So, mm. so have you had some connection in your sessions with the star family? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've found that there's been a real shift mm. actually hit, and here's a personal story. Good. I love those. When, <laughs> when, when I first started listening to Dolores Cannon, what drew me to her, I absolutely adored the healing stories, the healing side of things. As a professional therapist, I just loved it. Mm. Every single time, and I listened to everything, every single time that I try to listen to convoluted universe or anything <clears throat> star family or anything like that it just wouldn't work on my phone no matter how many times i tried to listen to it something would glitch or the battery would go flat there was there was two instances where it just glitched out i try to reset the phone and it was just gone just disappeared so I took that as a sign that I, that I wasn't ready. But lately, in the last probably 12 months, yeah, yeah it slowly just, just sort of morphed in, into it. And I'm getting a lot of sessions that are, that are beautiful star family connections. I'm getting more and more. Yeah. So obviously, I wasn't ready for it. And again, your higher self knows you best. It knows you better than you know yourself, like it does all of us. And so it only gives you, I mean, it can actually run interference if something isn't good for you right then. Doesn't mean it totally. won't be, to, doesn't mean it won't be tomorrow or the next 10 minutes away, but right then you're not quite ready. Something needs to happen before you need to sit with it or gel or open up more. So isn't it yeah. beautiful how, you know, we could say that we're so loved and we're so provided for and protected if you want that. We're not really unsafe, so we don't really have to worry about protection. <laughs> we're safe, but we have this loving oversoul, higher self that, you know, really takes good care of us so that yeah. when you're not ready for something, it can make your phone go flat, you know? It's energy. Yes. It's energy. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, I love Julia's term where she said, where she, um, she talks about a guidance team. Like, that's beautiful because that, that can be your angels or your star family or your higher self. There's, there could be numerous people or yeah. energies in, in your guidance team. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a beautiful thing. I think she says inner GPS or something like that. It's our inner guidance system. And it's really, really beautiful and loving and kind. And, you know, for people that aren't actually sounds odd but for people who aren't as comfortable with love because they didn't experience a lot of it it can be a stretch to trust that there's this loving energy surrounding us all the time but one little taste of it and you're hooked <laughs> one yes. little experience like that and you're like oh my word and all you want to do is say thank you right yeah yeah totally yeah yeah so so yeah i mean i i I want to share a little session information, but I wanted to check with you first to see how you felt about it and how what you're seeing and everything. And I love that. Like, different things happen when we are all ready, not before, not after, but when we're ready. And so I did have this one fun session that I, I just, to this day, I want to contact the gentleman again and I want to um, see if he wants to do more work because um, <laughs> it was a blast. Um, so he actually had had some experiences with contacts from other beings, um, our star family, his star family. 
we'll say. And um, he had a, a, a file about three inches thick of data that he was collecting. And he was just a regular guy, super, super like regular guy, nice person. Um, nothing fancy about him at all, but he had had these experiences going on for years and he was just curious. You know, he was a little afraid at first when it happened, but he just got really curious and started studying it like Dolores. She was always saying, be curious. So he came to a session with like this file. Really, it was about three inches thick. He had pictures on his phone. He had videos and all he wanted to do, because when you have a listening open ear and I was excited about it, he just wanted to share everything, all yeah. of his information. Yeah. And I was getting nervous because it was the one day I had plans like seven or eight hours later. And I thought I was safe to do that. Right. The one day I had other plans. <laughs> that one time. Ah, taught me a lesson for sure. Um, yeah. He was just so excited. He wanted to talk about the data. And I said, you know, we better start the session because we need time. Um, so finally we got the session rolling and I don't even remember what he was shown for the first part, which he, I think he was shown something, but you know, it was a while ago. But what was so neat was when we got to his higher self, the voice changed and it was a being coming through with information that was one of the group of beings that he had contact with um, that were working with him. So the voice was super soft. I had to get so close to the bed mm. to hear, but it was so, it was such a beautiful, beautiful honor and blessing to be able to communicate with this wise being that was sharing all the background information answered his questions. He had about a hundred questions. We didn't get through all of them, but answering all of his questions about why he was picked to be contacted. And the fun part was they said, um, because even though he was a little afraid when this interaction started happening, he got over it really quickly and he just stayed curious. So that was sort of mm. a, I think, universal message. Like we can be afraid of something because it's new or different, but if we stay curious and want to learn about it, the fear dissolves and we yeah. then we get the benefit from whatever this new thing is. So keep going and, and stay curious. You'll learn. So he did that. They said, so they picked him because even, he was a regular guy and he, even though he was afraid, he worked through it really fast. So he could collaborate with them. And the fun part was that they said, um, you know, he asked why, why they were checking in on him, why, you know, he had experienced little, little marks on his body and stuff like that, that he had pictures mm. of. And um, he wanted to know what they were. And they said that he um, had agreed, you know, at a soul level, of course, all of this is by agreement only. We just don't always remember our agreements at a soul level when we come to earth. But he agreed to be a part of this um, process where they were checking certain, you know, random sampling of humans um, to see how far we were on the process of the ascension process, to see, you know, how we were dealing with the energies shifting. And they would just be checking in with certain people to um, monitor, make sure they were okay, kind of take a random sampling of humanity and see like if there was too much energy coming in and we weren't dealing well with it. Like they loved humanity and wanted to help assist with this transition that we're going through, energetic transition, raising of consciousness, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. But they were lovingly watching over and checking in with certain humans that could could handle this. They weren't going to mm -hmm. work with people that weren't handling it. They weren't going to bother people. But this gentleman actually started liking his interactions and was going to write a book about it at some point. But um, it was so reassuring. And he asked about disclosure. When are we going to know as a, as a, you know, mass group of people, humans, when are we going to know the truth about, you know, our interactions that humanity, parts of humanity have had for a long time with other beings, star family beings, you know, when are we going to all be um, notified that it's okay. We've had these long standing relationships and, as Dolores wrote in her book, Keepers of the Garden, if anybody wants to mm. read about that, um, you know, this earth has been formed with the help of many advanced beings, whether they're mm. seen or unseen, whether we call them angels or guides or star family, it's all the same. We have been helped forever. 
with the creation of this earth, with the development and evolution of this earth and humanity, we have had help forever. I want to say thank you to all the helper beings. There's so many, but for whatever reason, times changed way back when, and it was decided by a group of people that we weren't humanity we shouldn't know about this that we couldn't handle it and maybe they cared about us so much that they thought that we would be afraid or we couldn't handle it maybe they protected us who knows but we're different now i think people are more and more ready to hear that we're not alone in this universe we're not just spinning around on a little rock in the middle of a galaxy all alone that's ludicrous you know <laughs> like come on if we can do it so can others we're just, you know we're no different we're just yeah. you know we're here even it, it, even the scientists know that it's mathematically impossible to think that we're the only ones. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I do highly recommend the book Keepers of the Garden by Dolores Cannon. And that's at Ozark Mountain Publishing, probably on Amazon as well, because, and I'm putting a plug in for it because it's really eye opening, but it's, it's really um, kind of helpful when we're starting to open up to this idea of how, how this could be you know you know it's to try to ease people's minds that it's normal it's been going on for a long time there's you know you don't have to worry about it this isn't anything new you know and there's no <laughs> nothing to be afraid of you know how hollywood might want us to be afraid because there's you know fear is for entertainment purposes only is what dolores um <laughs> heard from a higher self in my level one training Fear is for entertainment purposes only. So if you want to go pay money to go to a scary movie, go ahead. That's what it's for. But reality is not scary like that. It's yeah. just amazing. So in any case, this, this beautiful being that spoke so softly mm. that came through him said, um, at the time, he wanted to know when would disclosure happen. The gentleman did. And that was around 2014. To, yeah, around 2014, late summer, I think. And um at the time, they said probably, as we're seeing it, that maybe three to five years. Well, we're a little outside, you know, of three to five years, but it's there's no exact timing. It's whenever humanity is ready. And that's what I love. It's like, whether it's the higher self or whether it's advanced beings that are working with humanity and earth to help shift the frequency and lighten it up, make it more kind and loving and, and sustainable, we'll say. Um, they always are looking out for the highest and greatest good of one and all. This is, this is only going to happen when everybody's going to be able to be okay with it, ready. You know, maybe not every single person, but enough people so that we can all help each other. Yes. So, um, and, the, and he had other, and other questions, but I find this helpful. In some ways, I feel like maybe I'm supposed to say this to help people know that we are going to have changes as we move forward. It's going to be wonderful. And the, try really hard to, even if you're nervous or afraid of, something like disclosure, know that you can work through it. And there are a lot of people around to help, especially all the QHHD practitioners who love this stuff, you know, but um, that, that, that being said, there would be kind of uh, phases to this rollout, we could say of this idea. Um, and they said that what would happen would be, there would probably be a couple of waves of fear that would happen. One would be this fear like, oh my God, we've been lied to. And then people will get kind of accustomed and then it'd be like, oh my God, is everything we've ever been taught a lie? So this, this beautiful advanced being was saying they were aware that this is a process that would happen. And they really were all about making sure that humanity was ready and prepped for this. And they never want to disturb humanity. They don't want to topple us over. But at this point in our evolution, you know, we've kind of seen what we can do alone, quote unquote, be, being disconnected from source or other beautiful guidance teams out there. We in our conscious mind state of humanity have done as well as we can, but we haven't been able to pull off this um, balance of considering health and well-being for all beings uh, equally and for the earth equally to the heavens equally like we've neglected the earth we've we've done a lot of damage in our ignorance in our unknowingness it wasn't i don't think intentional i think it was just a lack of i don't think people do things completely um intentionally i think they do things based on their level of consciousness so mm -hmm. i don't think humanity understood the impact we do have 
and the connection we do have on the earth. I don't think humanity has known the impact we've had on each other, let alone the earth and the heavens and everything in between. So we're learning, but right now we're at sort of this lovely crossroads where we can take this major leap in our consciousness and a major leap in evolution now and also being open to embrace the wisdom that exists um, embodied and maybe out of body, like energetic beings are here to help us. They're just waiting for us to be ready. So just a seed to plant that there are so many good things coming for us as um, human species. And if we can just open a little bit to the magic, to the loveliness of information and wisdom that's beyond our current scope of understanding, It'll help. It'll help get things moving in a really, really positive direction. And we'll do better than we can on our own with just thinking that it's just us, you know? Yeah, that's right. There's a, there's a man here in Australia and his whole life he had, um, he's seen UFOs his whole life, like thousands and thousands. He, he's only a young, look, I think he's in his 40s. Um, but he, he actually, he's seen over 2000 UFOs and for some reason, they just seem to be attracted to him. I would love to have a session with him, but he's, he's got documentation and he actually takes people out with him out in the outback in, in Australia. And th- so people can actually see them. For themselves there's just so many like you can't deny it exactly if, if you do want to deny it go out go out with them and go and see them for yourself yeah. well you know i think it's as we raise our frequency our our if we expand our consciousness we'll say it like that as we open to more understanding than we currently know it actually helps us to be able to see these ourselves. Like you can go out at night on a clear night and you can see stuff moving in the sky that isn't a satellite. And if you're open and willing and you give thanks and say, I want to see you, if you're ready, you'll be shown different things at your pace, right? Um, I think it was Wayne Dyer that said, it's not, um, I'll believe it when I see it. It's I'll see it when I believe it. There's that open door thing that happens. So this can happen everywhere. I mean, this is actually a beautiful thing that that gentleman probably sole purpose to come and lead these Definitely. tours. Totally. <laughs> and if you, if you can get him to come for a session, please let us know. Cause that'll be fun. <laughs> that would, that will be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That would be amazing. I've, um, I'm, I'm lucky because I've had, I've had a couple of surgeons come in. I've had, one of Australia's top lawyers come in, top solicitors come in, and they've had phenomenal sessions. Yeah, yeah phenomenal session, all ET stuff. Mm-hmm. <gasps> they've they've seen them. They 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 feel like they can't talk to their colleagues about it because they'll just be crazy weirdos or or whatever. <laughs> but so, so they'll just come in. They'll just come in and fly and have a session, and they have the most phenomenal sessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really life changing expanding Mm -hmm. for them Mm, it's beautiful and i'm so i know and i'm so glad you're there for them because that is such a relief when people find somebody that can listen without judgment unconditionally loving neutral like pretty much you can say anything to you and you're fine yeah Mm. oh oh, 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 sorry yeah go ahead I, i always laugh because people come into my office and and one of the first things they usually say is they go, this is going to sound so weird, but, and I'm like, hang on a moment. Do you know who you're talking to? I know, right? <laughs> There's nothing weird. It's all so interesting. It's just interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's funny too, because it's like, wait, you're talking to me about yeah. weird? <laughs> like, like, we could talk here. But also, <laughs> <laughs> but weird... <laughs> we've been saying for years like weird is the new normal like it's so fun it's not boring it's so interesting Um, life becomes more magical because we are open to things that are always there but they just wait patiently for us to be ready you know yeah 
You don't, yeah. you don't need to have a humdrum life where you just feel like you're doing, going through the motions, obligatory actions, whatever it is, like dutifully doing X, Y, Z without any joy. You don't have to feel like that. There's a whole world waiting for you when you're ready. Mm-hmm. It's, a, totally. it's a new totally. way of living. Mm, connected mm. connected yes and um we we never know what's going to happen in a qhst session we never know every client and every day is different so some, some of my favorite sessions are actually the the more spiritual ones mm-hmm. where they when where they see um past over relatives i had a i had a client come in last week i think it was last week or, or the week before and she just lost her daughter just wanting some answers and stuff like that. And her session, her, her daughter came and just told her that she was okay. And it was beautiful because she hadn't passed for very long, so she was still in the resting place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it was a real soul-to-soul connection, but she was actually there, the client, she was actually there and she was crying, obviously, and she was holding her and she was telling her how much she missed her and because she was only a child. Mm. And, oh, it was mm. just so beautiful, so life-changing, absolutely life-changing. And the client wanted to know answers of why it happened. But the, the daughter was still in, in the resting. She was still very much in the resting place because it, it was only really recently. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And, and her daughter was had such a beautiful energy about it because she died of a sickness of an illness here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was beautiful. And, and her daughter said, I'm, um, I've had my guides here and they're starting to tell me and we're going through the lessons and, and everything and in, in our life and my life, but I'm still at a resting phase. And she said, but as soon as I know, I promise you, I will tell you. I was so like, fun. wow. How oh, beautiful! Oh, and she and she came and she came out and she was bawling her eyes out. But mm-hmm. the 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 peace that she found within herself was just it's beyond words, oh, isn't it? It's beyond words. Mm. Yeah, it's so beautiful, and the release of all the grieving happens in that moment when they're crying and shedding all the sadness because they miss their loved ones so much, and then they realize. I still have this connection with them. Yeah. They're not gone. They're just, totally. diff- they're just shift. They shifted energy forms. They right? just shifted energy forms. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's so much um, new learning to come out about that. Like some people have always had these connections with their loved ones. They're called mediums and psychics, you know, but for everyday people to have this too, is what I think is, is beautiful. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. It is true. It's true. And it's so heartwarming to be able to, to witness that or feel it ourselves in our own sessions. Cause I have as well. And it's like, it's the best feeling in the world, even though it's usually comes with tears. It's like tears of joy, tears of, you can't really put words to it. It's just whatever it is, it, it is, but that is so beautiful and I know we did talk a little yesterday about that it is one of my favorite things in a session to facilitate too is the healing between deceased loved ones and the the client oh my gosh I had a friend come years ago and same thing she had an issue with her mom that they didn't heal before her mom transitioned out of this world and so we um, asked if her mom was available and in comes the mom and I literally felt like I was kind of a third wheel because the two of them were conversing <laughs> and having a conversation yeah. and I was like what is she saying because I could only hear my client talking <laughs> I couldn't hear what the mom was saying so the client had to tell me well she's telling me this and telling me that and I said is there something you want to say to her and she said I forgive you mom I forgive you I love you and mm-hmm. there comes the tears and it was the most beautiful thing such an honor to facilitate and to witness that healing multi-dimensional healing like our mom's on yeah. a different plane um, but the healing can happen and we yeah. get to see that isn't it so beautiful it's, it's the most beautiful thing and ever yeah. and I and know. some sometimes if the client um, is still feeling a bit vulnerable, I, I actually tell them you can do whatever you want to do and say whatever you want to say with them and don't say a word. It's just between you and, and the loved one 
and you just tell me when you're ready. And then, and then they have the smile and they go, okay, I'm ready now. And I say, oh, they're still there. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're still there. But it's mm. either something that they have to get off their chest. And to, to me, that's, that's their personal stuff. That's got nothing to do with me. So Yeah. Actually, John, I'm just more nosy than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I have to know, but it's not just me. It's like, this is so funny. I constantly hear Dolores' voice. Like, I want them to say it because I want it to be on the recording so they on the can recording. listen to it later, yes. right? So I'm yeah. more nosy than you are. And I respect that you are so, so beautifully present for them and allowing them to do whatever. Um, so yeah, it's okay either way. But yeah, I can't sit there. I'm like, Inquiring, I can understand that. Uh, inquiring minds need to know. I need to know. What are you doing? <laughs> I need to know. But I'll really, it's not about me. It's about that would be also so they can hear it later. Even though they'll always remember yeah. that, they will not yes. forget. I, I, t- I totally understand. Just, you know, as you know, we both share that it's been the most beautiful experience to be a part yeah. of, right? However it works out. So many. Yeah, people. totally. Yeah. I've also found that I, I feel like there's, you know, with everything um, in our human learning, we're programmed and conditioned by, you know, the good intentions of those around us, because we are taught what people know, our parents, our families, our schools, our religions, or whatever, we're taught what they know, it's hand me down information, some is relevant, some is maybe not so relevant. But I've had people say to me, I didn't think I was allowed to talk to deceased relatives. And I said, well, whatever gave you that idea? I was told we're bothering them. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're not bothering them. They love it. And if they're not available, you'll hear that from your higher self. They're not available. They've moved on. They're in another life. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Like, no way are you bothering them. They want to heal as much as you do, you know? the universe is all about healing and resolution actually that is what it's about it's not about staying in conflict (laughs) i think we're late on the the memo on that one it's not about staying in conflict people (laughs) that's what gets you stuck it's about resolving you know and we do that through, through love and loving work and loving intentions and loving healing techniques and whatever else it's really love is the resolution the solution you know yeah yeah totally totally so it's fun to po- educate people who come and they have these ideas and they're, they're not, it's not how it is. We don't, it's not how it works out actually in sessions at all. I have never had a higher self say um, that we were bothering anyone, <laughs> you know, more than likely the, the deceased relatives have been trying to contact the person, but they haven't been able to hear them directly, you know? Yeah. 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 To- yeah totally. Mm-hmm. Have, have you had many um, clients that have been in, like direct contact with Jesus? Um, we, I had a series of sessions where Jesus was a prominent feature or the crew was a, a prominent part of the session. Actually, it's so interesting because it's sort of this energy of connection where um, people have either had lives shown where they were with Jesus or they've been part of like the group around Jesus, um, yeah. part of the early... Um, teachings of jesus and my god i love those i have to tell you me too all right ah the energy i i mean i could just sit there in awe and just it fills me up the energy is so beautiful and sweet and loving and gentle i don't even know how to say it you know i'm those are some of my favorite sessions as well yeah me too too. yeah Mm -hmm. and people always weep when the Jesus energy and connection, it seems like people cry, not because they're sad, it's, but whoosh. It's the, it's the energy. Yeah. I it here's a personal, personal story. I actually, um, when, when I had one of my sessions, I actually went to a past life and I was only a little boy and there was a massive gathering of people huge one and I was on my father's shoulders looking and then the facilitator said what's going on and I said he's coming he's coming we're all so excited he's he's coming and then I I saw there was um there was one horse and Jesus was on the horse and and there were six 
I presume they were the disciples around him just walking. But he, but he was on the horse. He, he looked really, really tired. And everyone was so excited. I didn't see his face, but I could feel his energy and I could feel the energy of the crowd. And the crowd felt so intense because the, the human side of us was he's going to Bethlehem heat and he's going to tell them off. He's <laughs> just... Yes. So yes. everyone, because of the unjust that the Romans were, were doing to, to the villages and to everything, everyone just had a knowing. They are like, he's, he's going to tell them off, but he's going to suffer the con. He's going to suffer greatly for it. And it was just a knowing in, in the crowd. Mm. So... And there was there was hundreds in this little village. That's it was beautiful. it was yeah it was very, it very much reminded me of a kid when um, when the queen would come and everyone would gather on the streets and then they'd be like oh we just want to see her we just want to see her it was, it was sort of like that that yeah everyone was so excited and yeah yeah it was really cool it was really cool yeah it was just, I, it was only a glimpse that it was only a glimpse that I got but you could just you could just feel the energy and. You're like that's the epitome of what a human being can be. That's the example. He showed us the way is what we say. Yeah. You know, I'm going to share, I don't usually share this, but I love that you said that. And I too had a, a life shown in a session where, yeah, there was a, a gathering and it was, um, it was Jesus was doing a teaching in a small circle of people. It was yeah. like on a hill and it was, um, you know, it was shown and I'm, my facilitator asked what was going on and I was like uh, I was like bawling and going yeah oh, he's teaching oh, Jesus is giving a teaching oh that was just like whoosh. like but I was really struggling with my conscious mind because what came up for me in the session was I'm not worthy I'm not worthy of being in his presence it was I was a male in that life when that was shown an adult male but it was the weirdest thing how it brought up all this junk teaching to be cleared. Yeah. And that took years to sort of integrate that and understand that, that, you know, the teachings have been, you know, distorted. It's like the game of telephone, you know, the, the original mm. message gets changed, but the presence and the energy and the whew, awe, it's the feeling, it's the feeling. And, and it's just overwhelming like love is what it is yeah mm. so i love that you've had that experience too there's some sort of uh an energetic camaraderie i think that happens when we've had a life shown where we're there and the people that come that get shown that now if i'm really going to go into my metaphysical knowingness i would say i believe we are all one and we are all individually having an experience of the oneness. So I believe we all have the ability to tap into an experience of being there with him or with any number of beings, you know, that are yeah. ex exalted teachers or highly spiritual advanced beings on this planet or off. I believe we have the field of light at our disposal and our higher self will use whatever it takes to help us know who we are, remember where we've been, what we have access to and if it's appropriate we'll we'll have that shown to us or that experience given to us and it's a blessing um, all of it is a blessing but for whatever reason to be in the presence have the memory of and the vision of being and the life of being shown of being in the presence of jesus when he was teaching when he was walking the earth I, it's really hard to put it in words how you feel when you get that gift yeah mm -hmm. But mm. I thank you for sharing that because that's super sweet. <laughs> yeah, it was super cool. It, yeah. it was uh, it's an experience I'll I'll never forget and a feeling that I'll never forget. Exactly. And you and know, the beautiful thing is is that you can always tap you can always tap back into that feeling. I can always true. tap back into that feeling whenever I want to. Yes. Mm. And if you really want to really be clearly involved with it, you listen to your recording again. Oh, it shifts everything energetically. You're right there again, right? Like yeah. it's, it's good enough that we can rem remember it without the recording. But I used to put the recording on just if I had a day where I was feeling a little down, I just put that recording on and I go <gasps> and get all feeling good and inflated with that energy again. That's how it's medicinal in a way like that. 
the listening to the recording is so important with a QHHD session. It's like, it shifts your energy when you listen yeah. to it back to the state of wholeness, which I think Jesus would, would um, <laughs> agree with <laughs> that he saw people as whole. And when he recognized them as whole and saw them as whole, the healing happened because he was helping them remember wholeness, which is yeah. what health is. So I believe there are other books uh, from Ozark Mountain Publishing that are about like his teachings and how he healed and things like that, that are really interesting to read. I also wanted to put in another plug for um, Dolores's book, Between Light, Death and Life, because we talked about deceased loved ones and Ozark Mountain Publishing. That was one of Dolores's books that explained kind of what happened. You said the resting place in case people want to read about what happens, um, what she found um, in her work about what happens when you die. Um, I find that book to be really reassuring, comforting, and um, it's something people can look at if they want to explore that topic more. Also, of course, her books, Jesus and the Essenes, and They Walked with Jesus, are amazing um, books about the information she discovered when she had a client that went under and they went back to the life of mm -hmm. Jesus. And the, They Walked with Jesus is amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. I rarely read books more than once because I feel like I kind of retain when I read. I'm already, I've done Jesus and the Essenes I read three times. I think they walked with Jesus I've read twice. Every time I read it, I get some more information or insight coming in. Those yeah. books she writes are energetic books. Uh, They're just amazing. Uh, you'll get more than you bargain for <laughs> in a good Definitely. way. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great. Yeah, I feel like we've covered a lot today. Yeah, th thank you so, so much for giving me your time. Oh, such an honor, a pleasure. Um, your energy is just wonderful, peaceful, lovely, and I'm honored to be here to do this with you. Thank you. So just, just run through your, um, through your web website again, yeah. just in case anybody wants to get hold of a person who's been personally trained by Dolores herself and was a very good and dear friend with her. Oh, I love Dolores. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, qhhtofficial.com, find a practitioner. I'm a level three practitioner. I'll be on that website. Um, and my website, healingworks-salon.com. Um, my email is healingworkssalon, all one word, at gmail.com. So those are three different ways people can get a hold of me. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Ah, you are more than welcome. And thank you, John. An honor and a blessing. Thank you. Mm -hmm.